Do people suck? Well, there's your intro. This is the Existential Stoic <laughs> Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. What's going on, Danny? What's up, Randy? You know, I've had an interesting week encountering some people that just suck. And uh, how's your week been? I've had an interesting week in that respect. I feel like every time I get in the car, people just suck. Oh, <laughs> like, goodness. You know? God, dude. It's yeah. like... I don't know. I feel like and maybe it's just like the world we live in now, but like no one pays attention to anything except their like dirt, tiny bubble. And mm -hmm. like, you know, it's like they just stop in the middle of the road now. They don't go at lights. And like all the other thing I've noticed too is like trash. Every, dude, people just throw their trash on the ground now. It's like no concern for the community you live in or anything. Like what happens? I, you know, I have a theory about this. I think that we live too much in cities. Like, I think people are grouped together too much. Because sometimes I wonder yeah. this. Like, I sometimes I enjoy watching Murder, She Wrote. And, you know, she lives in this quaint little town. Everybody gets along just fine. I mean, sure, somebody's murdered, like, every week. But, but it's <laughs> called Murder, She Wrote. Yeah. Actually, that's probably why everybody gets along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, yeah. You make a good point, though, which is like those small communities, like you, you know, everybody, you see everybody like there's more of an impetus to like actually help keep the community a certain way than when you feel like you're just like kind of surrounded by a bunch of people you don't know. Right. Like, well, dude, I, I feel this like viscerally because I live in somewhat of an urban environment. And when I go out to the country for a few days, you know, at first I'm like, whoa, everything is really slow. And then after a few days, I get used to it. And then when I come back to the urban environment, I'm like overwhelmed. Like it takes just minutes for me to get pissed off at people and everything. And yeah. I'm like, holy cow, this is the world that I'm living in. That's got to say something. Yeah, I notice myself too. I much prefer like smaller towns, smaller areas, because I feel like you just like, you have a better chance of interacting with people. You have a better chance of just like, and I think there's more accountability on each individual because they know it's like almost like, you know, like when you're in a big area, like there's lots of eyes, but there's no eyes turned towards you specifically. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a small area, it's like there are eyes turned towards you in a sense because you, you know, you feel like you're more of a part of keeping this thing going. Like in a big city, it doesn't, you know, you just feel like, you know, whatever, like it doesn't matter. Yep. See, people don't even yeah. look up from their phones anymore. I just, I, I just straight shoulder ram this dude today who was like, literally it was that or me walk into a wall. Cause he just didn't look up from his phone the whole time. So yeah. I just let him have it and it felt good, but that's, that's why the other thing too. Yeah. Go ahead. No, what you're saying. But that's why people suck. They do. They do suck. And you know, I think that dude, the screens are killing us. I think too, because we have no, like no ability to communicate anymore. And like we're in our own like we think everything matters like all of our stuff matters more than anything else like that's the other problem you know what's really interesting was i noticed this this week was uh i saw two people talking and then one of and they were having like a very uh involved conversation and then one of their phones rang and the person without even pausing or saying anything just picked up their nope. phone and walked away and I was yeah. just like, what kind of culture have we bred where anything is more important than the actual encounter you're having with somebody at the moment? Well, dude, you remember, like, I remember, like, when this is going back, obviously, when cell phones first came out, like, I never saw them out when people were eating and stuff. Now it's like you go to a restaurant, if they're not on their phone, it's on the table. Yeah. You know, like, right next to them. So if any notification happens, they can immediately divert to their phone. It's like, we're we're constantly removing ourselves from the present for this like intermediary world that's not real you yeah. know it's really strange like you know how many notifications do you need how many freaking like does it matter if you more. get back to this person right now yeah <laughs> i need more clearly like, more. lots more <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, it's interesting is that we get we get caught up in these lives and other people suck and clearly it's not me but like i no. notice i notice i'm going through my day being like he should do that different. She should do that different. This person should do that different. This person should be. And then I was reading uh, um, the Field Guide to the Happy Life, Massimo's book. And yeah. it freaking smacked me. See, I thought all along 
I thought that I was a smart, educated man, but it turns out that I am nothing not. but a common fool. And here's why. Oh. In that book, he says, in general, if you wish people to be different from what they are, you are a fool. How about that? Yeah, because you can't. I mean, that's this is the problem, right? Is that get as frustrated as you want. You can't change other people. You can only change yourself. Mm -hmm. That dichotomy of control isn't. I mean, the dichotomy of control is probably one of the most brilliant things the Stoics ever really came up with, right? That idea, you know, of really being, really being clear about what's in our ability to actually exercise any control over. Because we like to think we have control over the world. We don't, you know, and other people. And it's like, you know, it's like people make this mistake all the time in relationships, right? If I could just change this person into my ideal person, then they'd be great. It's like, well, you can't. You know, because so then they're another divorce person and find another person. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe shit, right? I mean, you know, but that's this is the difficulty, right? It's like I think there is something about accepting people as they are and realizing. And I, but I think the problem with this too is that you know, they're also. I think we also need to emphasize more like our role within a community and within our surroundings, so that we are more like also like conscious but that's people. Communist, in the world. right? But I'm American, communist. damn it. That's communist. It's all about me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting because he talks about it being in their nature. And we did that episode last week about, you know, what's in your nature. But he says, if you wish your colleagues not to be occasionally annoying or politicians not to be corrupt or wealthy people not to be greedy, you're a fool because that's in their nature. Yeah. Like, it's, it's crazy because I've been trying to remind myself of this. Like, I'll go to a communal place and it's a quiet communal place. And there's that one jack off who's just loud as a motherfucker, excuse me, effer on his phone and just like completely oblivious to everybody else there relaxing and oh, just dude, doesn't about... care. Yeah. And it's just like, right, so... that's just his nature. I went into the store the other day and a guy walks in with his phone held like here. Like mm. like three feet from his face, yelling. I'm like, dude, just what the hell are you doing? <laughs> what Radiation, are you, doing? you can't hold it close to your head. <laughs> yeah, what is happening here? Oh but yeah, gosh. I think this. But I think this is part of it. I think we don't, we don't have any sort of sense of like, you know, the importance of working on ourselves and stuff anymore. It's all like I'm perfect. Everybody else is wrong, and it's a really bad way to be in terms of like the community as a whole. We don't think about that anymore. So I think it is very hard, though, if you are conscientious, it's very hard sometimes to be in the world. And it does take a lot of effort not to get angry at people. Bruce, so what, yeah. what can we do about people sucking? Because it's been it's, I've had a heck of a week, man. And and each time I come back and yeah. I'm just like, man, it's you know, it's just different strokes for different folks. You know, yeah. they're them. I'm me. But man, it's that's been a why I, try to, I, I try my best just to like let it go. Because it's yeah. not me, you know, if it in there, if it directly affects me, I try to like be as calm as possible and just like move on with my life because it's really not important. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day, you know, and like ideally, you know, in an ideal world, if we do, if we be the example, right, other people see it like there's a guy, one of my neighbors, he's a really nice guy. And every time he walks his dog, he brings a, a trash bag and one of those like, uh, what do you call them, like, call things? Yeah. And he picks up trash on his walk nice and it's like really nice and it's like you know that's like awesome because he's doing something both for the community but also for himself right like he doesn't like seeing this but he's also making an example everybody that sees him sees what he's doing right and so they might not do it right now but maybe eventually they do or maybe they maybe it makes them more conscientious about their trash like oh man i threw that on the ground not like an asshole you that's know? a really interesting point because like i read about i read a lot of this stoic stuff and they're always talking about like making an example of your life for other people, like living virtuously so that other people see how well you live. But nowadays, the only thing that people show about their life is how much money they have, how many cars, how many, yeah. how much clothes, jewelry, followers, all of that. And that's the only thing that they show off. And that is the most superficial, worthless thing in the world. And I'm kind of happy yeah. that almost all influencers are suicidally depressed because they probably won't be around for that long. There you go, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Positive thinking. Yeah. Yeah, the, it, it is funny. Well, you know, Sartre, I always like that he said, too, because he always says, like, you know, like, even though, like, he thinks morality is individual and stuff, that, like, he says, you know, 
we portray to the world our conception of the like the good person meaning like whatever you do whatever actions you take you're saying to the world this is right if you think about it that way and think about how you're acting you're making a statement every time you do stuff you're saying that i accept people acting in this way so you know it's funny because we see so many hypocrites people getting angry at people when they do the same thing they do you know and it's like you have to stop step back and ask yourself like what well, am i doing that stuff okay am i an example or am i just you know Danny, part of the i gotta ask you because this is a conundrum that i come up to on a regular basis there's that saying That's would you right. rather be right or kind and it's like well if i don't have to live with being kind yeah i'd surely do that but this it, when it especially when it comes down to like manners like social manners and courtesy and things like that because it's like At least I think that I'm right in those things, but it makes me not kind. But, but by pointing it out, you mean? Yeah. But then again, are they being unkind by not using proper social manners? It's hard, right? Because we also don't know what their day has been like and stuff. Yeah. I always think of it like, you know, like every time I go to the store, I always hold the door for somebody, you know, usually because there's usually people coming in and out, right? And they're always very, usually most people are very happy and thankful when that happens. And I always just think like if I do that and they're happy and they say thank you, maybe they'll do that next time. You know, like I can't force them to do anything. I don't know so, the time or the energy. Like, so. Okay. So here's know? like, here's like the point in case example. So like, okay. When people leave a mess after themselves, like at the yeah. gym, on the street, Wherever it is, when they just treat the world or their environment like their mom's going to come along and clean it up, it just really bugs me. Oh, yeah. And so, like, yeah. and I so have, this whole, thing, now, I have this whole thing go on in my head. Like, do I say something or do I just let this go? Water off a duck's back. Like, the only if it bothers me, I should clean it up for me, not for them. But, like, I just find it happening so often. And maybe it's because it's something that bothers me that I find it happening so often. But it's just like, I mean, yeah. It could be that, but I doubt it, though, because I notice that a lot, too. I think people are not, they're not conscientious of other people anymore. And they act like it, like they will have somebody come clean it up for them basically every time. So I think in some cases, like if it's something that happens, like at a gym or something where there is an etiquette you're supposed to follow Dude, for safety like, and for cleanliness. They, they like let you borrow you know? towels at the gym. And there's very clearly like right on the way out of the locker room, a towel, a, a thing for towels to put your towels back. It's exactly where you get them yeah. out. There's a thing to put the towels back. And guys just leave the towels all over the freaking place, like everywhere, except for in the towel thing. And it's just like, what effort does it take? And then they're just like sopping wet the whole entire gym floor. I know I'm just losing it. Yeah, I'm getting old. Well, no, but you know, that that's also <laughs> this is also the problem, though, because this is also on the this is also on the places themselves, though, too, to monitor their stuff. They should be doing something like if they're going to set if they're going to set guidelines for people, they should also be enforcing them. You know, and I think this is the other problem because we stopped doing that entirely. And I think this is why we've gotten in the situation we're in. Because I think, like, you know, we can't change people, but they also have to be aware of what the rules Probably are. because we stopped paying people decent wages. You That's know, it used to be, it used to it, be yeah. where, like, having a job was a, a privilege. And now people are just like, I don't want to work. When's, and, you know, when's but universal I basic income even... coming? I can't even blame them half the time because these jobs pay so little. It's like, is it even worth your time? You know what I mean? Like, so I can't get mad at the people that work yeah. in these places. Like, I do. I get mad at Target all the time when I go by here because there's no registers open and stuff, but they have no staff. So it's like, I'm not going to get mad at the staff. It's not their fault. And it's like, at the same time, though, it's like, this is the world. And it's frustrating, you know? Well, now, now, isn't it like you need to spend $200 or you need to steal more than $200? So I don't think you need to pay for anything as long as your bill's under $200. And then yeah, you just, just walk leave. right Doesn't out. Matter. I'm pretty sure that's the way it goes. It's insane Ugh. now. I know. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah. What is the yeah. world coming to? I wonder, I wonder I what's we going to happen more. with universal bank of basic income when that comes. Because no, I'm no. sure it's going to be eventually... Eventually, it's going to have to the rate we're going because people are getting paid so little that it's like you can't even make a living. If or machines just not are really job. that good at doing everything that humans, I mean, yeah. Elon Musk's book that's what he talks about. His whole concept is like having machines take over pretty much everything that humans need to do. So then we will just be on universal basic income. And uh, yeah. who knows, though, it could make it could make a new creative age or something, right? 
if people are freed up to do what they want, they might do amazing things or they might do nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. We'll see. Most likely. Depends on how much hope we have. <sighs> yeah. So that's why people suck. And that's the end of this episode. Yeah. Anything else you want to mention? No, nah, that's good. All right. Well, we've come to that time where we beg and plead of you to leave us a good review on Apple Podcasts <laughs> because that's what every awesome person in this world does. So if you want to go ahead and do that, it yeah. does really help out enormously helps other people find our podcast and it helps you can be an example yeah i know a good example in this world not just showing right? off your cars and gold and all that other stuff so that's all for this episode thank you for listening to the existential post stoic podcast i'm randy that's danny i'll see you later danny later randy <laughs>